What I've learned about small channel growth in 2020. small channel growth in 2020, some of the decisions I've made on where to take the channel, and some of the tips and tricks that I have learned uh, from various different sources. I've done extensive research in trying to grow my small little channel, and you guys have been truly excellent for it. But I'd like to go over some of the things that I've learned and some conscious decisions that you need to make on a channel. I'm going to be going over a lot of stuff, so make sure that you stay through to the end to find out some of the tricks that I have learned. So, one of the things that you're going to see a lot of when it comes to small channel growth, especially if you're YouTubing the subject a great deal, is you're going to come across a lot of instructionals on how to make a channel, especially with you not appearing in it and things like that. It's, it's almost stealing content uh, because they're talking about taking footage from someplace else and doing voiceover works on it and um, making it fair use. Um, which is basically just taking somebody else's work and then changing it just enough that you can get around the copyright strikes on it. And that's all well and good, and you're starting to see these channels appear on a regular basis on YouTube, uh, where it's footage you've already seen, but it's somebody else's voiceover work, or they're, they're reviewing footage that you've already seen, and there'll be a little picture-in-picture picture in the bottom of their reactions to the video and, and things like that. And these are all little tricks people are, are using to try to create content without needing to create content. Heck, I've even seen a lot of people uh, refer to groups like Fiverr. And I went on there and looked, and sure enough, I found people on Fiverr that, are, that will create an entire episode content for you. You don't need to do anything but pay them and post it on your channel. That's it. All these little DIYs where you just see a couple hands moving around and, and making something and everything... And the voiceover work, the voice may be the channel owner, but that footage was sold to them in a lot of cases. And you can find it relentlessly on Fiverr. Uh, you know, there's kind of the hard way uh, that they call the hard way, and that's what I'm doing. Sitting in front of a camera, creating content for you guys, showing you what I'm doing instead of just creating something that's clickbait or, or something along those lines. I, I, you know, There's one guy out there recommending that you create meditation channels. You pay somebody on Fiverr like you know, 10 or 15 bucks to create a meditation mantra. You put a stock footage up on in your editor and you loop this thing for an hour. And, you know, he's showing you uh, hundreds of thousands of views on this thing. And I guess there are people that do that. They, they tune into YouTube for that. But, um, you know, he, 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 he'll brag about how he has, like, nine channels and he doesn't create any of the content. And there's other people who are uh, talking about the same things and they have uh, separate channels. These, these people who've monetized YouTube and they're talking about... Uh, income per click, uh, per thousand clicks actually, and um, they'll break it down and like uh, they'll they'll talk about um, niche channels, like find your niche kind of deal. Instead of creating a, instead of creating content that you want to create, 
create content that viewers want to create, and there is a market for that. Um, uh, people who are just trying to make money on the YouTube are, uh, are doing that kind of thing. But uh, they're, they're custom tailoring channels and trying to maximize the, the cost per thousand clicks in some of these niches, like the, fin I've got notes here, uh, like the financial niches and stuff like that are reported to have you know, uh, a little over ten dollars per thousand clicks on the uh, on the video. So when you're the video is viewed like a hundred thousand times, uh, game streaming is is big, and a lot of people have moved over to Twitch. But um, you know that that has the lowest cox cox clicks per uh, thousand something that like two and a half bucks. Uh, but that's all they're worried about is the monetization and everything. And uh, so I've made the decision to do it the hard way, a.k.a. the right way, and create the content for you guys. Seems to be working. You guys like it. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to share with you this, this journey and everything. Um, so one of the tactics I've personally used, and there's... I didn't pick this up anywhere. It's just kind of one of the things I use is I've created, I got the idea from what's called boat cards for sailboats. And it's uh, like a business card with your a picture of your boat on there, a picture of you on there, the name of your boat, and your name. So, because people will more likely recognize the boat, the cruisers will, will recognize your boat as opposed to you. And they come up with boat cards that uh, you can change. And it's kind of like it, swapping contact information. Um, so I, I uh, branched out on that and I created cards for uh, my channel, the Dread Pirate Mustache. It's got my logo, but it does have the boat info on the back, the name of my vessel, and uh, a little QR code that takes you to the channel. I've also created uh, stickers uh, with the logo and then a QR code that takes you to the channel uh, to kind of advertise. And I hand these things out all over the place. Anybody I talk to, I hand one of these. If, if I mention the fact that I have a channel or that I'm filming, especially when I'm filming, uh, people will ask and I give these out and um, they've been quite successful. I never go anywhere without my little box full of them. And I just print those out on my printer. It's, it doesn't cost me a lot. Um, you know, it costs me like nine bucks for like a hundred of them, but I can change the design as needed. So, uh, so one of the main determining factors that I had to uh, make a decision with when it came to the promotion of the channel is in order to monetize YouTube, you need public viewing hours and subscribers. So that's your, your views and your watch time. Um, I do my channel because I have the desire to do it. I'm creating the content uh, for you guys, the instructionals and showing you what's going on. And uh, I'll be filming the travels and, and, and everything. Um, so you kind of almost have to make a decision. Are you going to strictly try to monetize YouTube or are you doing the channel because you have the passion for it? And you'll find that a lot of big YouTube stars, like the big money makers, that's what they started with. They started making this stuff because they wanted to make this stuff, not because they were trying to cash in. In fact, some of these people, there was no cashing in back in the, back in the day. You know, they were big when cashing in came became a thing. So, uh, you know, they'll, they'll talk about, uh, you can set up a Patreon account to accept tips. I myself have a Patreon. If you're not a Patreon, check out the, uh, the information below. See about becoming a Patreon by the Pirate of Taco. Uh, but, um, they'll also talk about merchandise stores. And, a lot of this stuff takes money. Uh, you would not 
you can't just sit down and start a monetized YouTube channel or try to monetize a YouTube channel without some investment capital. That's the one thing they don't tell you. And the instructions just talk about going there and, and signing up and doing things, and you, you don't learn um, that these processes, you need money to kind of start it off. Um, so that's another thing to consider with this stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, they're, they're talking about how to do footage with voiceover so you can make it fair use so you're using somebody else's footage or footage you bought from somebody and then uh, doing your own voiceover work and things on it uh, reaction videos you film yourself watching a computer screen and those seem to be pretty big but you have to understand that what that person is doing is just trying to get you to view it They're, they've monetized that's where the ads come from um, and they'll talk, you'll see videos about top 10 niches to join in. That's when you know that you're getting into somebody who's creating stuff just for the sake of trying to get money out of it is when they're looking for the niche or they're looking to try to find a niche or they're doing things like view set, view stacking, uh, looking up how to create a channel with no presence on the screen, uh, outsourcing or buying content from others, it's entirely possible. And I looked this up. I mean, honestly, I was looking at it. And, um, you know, for about 15 to $25, I could create an episode and not have anything to do with it except post it. Uh, and have it custom tailored into certain niches. If you've done your research and everything, you're, you're going to find it. Also, you're going to see other little tricks. Like some of them that I'm employing right now, this multiple camera angle stuff, for instance, is uh, one of the uh, pieces of advice that they give. Um, the, the quick cuts that you see in this editing, uh, thumbnail creation, and uh, just as kind of a joke, you started to see the Dread Pirate mustache, uh, the circle with the arrow, kind of stuff, uh, matching your metadata up, making sure that your uh, titles and description and tags all have the necessary keywords in it so that uh, all your content is linked together. So if somebody views one of my videos, the suggested video block on the side will actually have other uh, videos of mine because all the metadata is linked into it. That's a, that's a real sneaky trick. Um, <laughs> Let me see here. Uh, yeah. To optimize the video, you need a searchable title, uh, your description with lots of sentences to include your keywords. Not just a keyword. Your keywords need to be multiple times in the description. Your tags all need to match and contain your keywords. Your thumbnail has to be uh, unique and eye-catching. Uh, you need to have the subtitles enabled on the video because Google Analytics actually uses the subtitle uh, transcription of your video for reactionary links. Uh, they, they talk about how uh, your videos need to be optimized between 10 to 12 minutes long and when you're monetized you place an ad every two minutes. Yeah. They, they literally say start with an ad every two minutes and then end with an ad. Another thing you'll see um, is uh, YouTube videos that you're watching where in the middle of the video, they'll ask you to subscribe and give a like. Subscribe. Like my video. Um, and they'll do that multiple times. They'll also do things like you saw at the beginning of this video where they will ask you to watch through to the end and they kind of keep the money shot to the end. I didn't do that. I'm giving you the tricks now even though I told you I was going to give them to you later. I'm just doing them now on my handy dandy paper. Uh, yeah. Talking about using stock footage that they get royalty free and just looping with voiceovers. Uh, they talk about optimization uh, 
for downloading, you need to do this uh, every day, um, or at least twice a week. And they talk about the days, Wednesdays, and, and, and things like that. Uh, yeah, up, upload at least once a week uh, using uh, analytics, not 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 your YouTube analytics, but using keyword searches. And there's services you can uh, purchase which will SOE search optimization. They will, uh, yeah, search engine optimization, SEO. They will uh, tag your keywords. They will suggest your title. That's where some of these massive titles come from. Uh, it's all geared to try to drive the search stuff to you in the hopes that the video will become viral. 1.7 million views. They're getting paid every thousand clicks. Uh, let me see here. You ought to forgive me referring to my notes. One of the one of the things that they talked about with uh, producing footage, uh, producing content without actually needing to make the content, is look for other videos that are doing the same thing. Their sources are usually listed to prevent a copyright strike. You can grab that same video and then do your own voiceover work on it. Uh, that's what you. I've been seeing it a lot, especially in Facebook posts. Um, the, the molten metal where they're making like swords and, and stuff like that out of like melted aluminum. I had watched all those videos a while ago because I was interested in that kind of stuff and now all of a sudden they're creeping up with somebody who obviously doesn't do it narrating over the top of it. Or they're talking about let's see what we're making today or, or, or something along those lines. And I'm not bad-mouthing this type of content. It's, it's what it is. It's, but um, when you're looking to kind of do your thing, you need to honestly make the decision, are you looking to try to monetize a channel? Or are you looking to create a channel for whatever reason, uh, some sort of creative outlet or, or something along those lines? I've created my channel to try to put information out on things that I'm doing that was difficult for me to obtain and to kind of document uh, what it's been taking for me to do a liveaboard sailing lifestyle and everything. Um, although I did, do, I did learn a lot in this process on uh, videos and things, so you're going to see different formats coming up on the channel uh, for various things uh, and various camera angles and there are a lot of good information on how to make your channels better and you don't need a lot of equipment for it some people do it with just a phone you do it with what you have you don't need to invest money in equipment uh, you can if you want I've invested in these cameras, but that's because I also want the cameras. It's, it's not solely for the benefit of this channel. Um, but you can either do it to have fun, or you can uh, do it to try to make money off of it. And although I'm not opposed to making money off of it, that's not why I do this channel. You guys have been great. Everybody's been wonderful. Uh, my subscribers continue to grow, and I greatly appreciate that. The Dread Pirate Mustache's hat is off to everybody. Uh, but it takes work to do that. In order to monetize YouTube, you need 1,000 subscribers, and you need 4,000 watch public watch hours in the last 12 months months. So twelve in the last 12 months from today, I need to have 4,000 hours. If I got half of that in one day, for the sake of argument and to make math easy, if I got half of that in one day, 
exactly 12 months from that day later, that day falls off. I need to have accumulated those watch hours again sometime in the next 12 months in order to continue to keep my monetization. And the monetization or the YouTube partner program uh, unlocks features where you start to see merchandise advertising and uh, you can do a lot more with your in cards and everything. So it is, it is something to, to strive for. I personally am moving towards it trying just to try to see if I can get there. Because if I accumulate 4,000 hours of watched time from my beloved viewers, that's an amazing thing. And it, in YouTube world, it's nothing. It's nothing. 50,000 subscribers, you're still small time. I mean, that's how YouTube looks at it. You need to have, I think, over 250,000 subscribers uh, until you start getting into echelons, <laughs> large, large scale things. I don't think I'll ever become that. It, wouldn't be, it would be nice, but I don't ever think that that's going to be a thing. I don't think there's a quarter of a million live aboard sailors who would be interested in my channel. <laughs> so, but, uh, so the key to growing a channel in 2020, do what you love. Don't attempt this with monetization. In my humble opinion, you should do it because you want to do it. The rest of the stuff, the, the watch hours and the subscribers and everything, that will come if you're doing good content. Not recycled content. Not... And you can have multiple channels. Don't get me wrong. There, there are people out there with instructional videos... Uh, where they have the channel that they do what they want, and then they have the channels that are the niche channels that basically make their income. They, they, they do that. So I'm not going to go into in-depth with the top 10 or the top 20 tricks or anything like that uh, because there's more than enough of that kind of content out there. But as a small YouTube channel just trying to get along in the world. I reviewed all that information. I did learn from it, and I highly recommend that you do your research on it too. Uh, just learning how to do camera work and editing software or just how to shoot certain channel, uh, certain shots, um, ideas. Uh, I highly recommend that you look into all that. I learned a great deal from it. But I kind of threw out all the get rich quick. You know, um, it takes a, a lot to follow one of these videos that say get a thousand subscribers in three months or have 4,000 watch hours in like a year. But that's a lot of work. It, it, it's an incredible amount of work to do a channel where you are not creating the content where you're trying to get content from other places and it's going to cost money. You can't you can't you can set up a YouTube channel for free. But um, Shopify is one of the big uh, merchandise stores. And what a lot of people don't tell you about that is that when somebody drops an order, Shopify bills you immediately to send that order out you are going to take a little bit of time because the money from the sale goes directly to you. It doesn't go to Shopify. So whatever pay system you have in place, there's processing times. There may be a day or two lag between the moment they place the order and the moment the money actually hits in your account. But Shopify is going to bill you immediately to drop ship that product out to them. So you kind of have to have this buffering capital involved with that. Unless you're going to man the store yourself. And that's a whole nother ball of wax because you're maintaining inventory and doing all that other stuff too. And and setting up a merchandise store is one of the tactics that uh, these tips and trick channels 
will tell you to employ to monetize your channel before you hit the YouTube Partner Program and be able to advertise on your channel. They also talk about getting sponsorships and all that stuff before you hit that. The ad revenue from the YouTube Partner Program is supposed to be the gravy on top of your biscuits. And uh, a lot of people get obsessed with that. I, I, I've chosen to kind of use it as a mile marker, but not something I'm striving for. Uh, it's, it's kind of the goal, but it's not something I'm trying to hit to monetize the channel. It's a good goal to show the, uh, that the channel is working. If I've hit the, the limit where I can monetize, then that means I'm actually doing something that people want to see because I, I now qualify for this stuff. That's the bare minimums to prove interest, in other words. So, uh, if you like what I'm saying, or you like the other content on the channel, subscribe. Hit the bell notification. You know, help a fellow YouTuber out. Small channel people got to stick together. Another tactic I have personally used is uh, whenever I get a subscriber, uh, I subscribe to everything that they are subscribed for. So if you subscribe to me, I subscribe back. So you grew me, I'm going to grow you. And that tactic has worked incredibly well. Uh, and, and talk about it. Be a shameless self-promoter. Uh, I have... I have the cards and the stickers I hand out. Uh, I actually have window decals on my car. Uh, my motorcycle helmet has uh, my stickers on the helmet. The, my full face helmet that I, I film with that has the camera mount on it actually has the, uh, the stickers that I've made on the helmet all the way around. So, um, I shamelessly self-promote. Uh, I plan to have a t-shirt made, t-shirts made, and uh, my flag on the Falcon will actually be replaced with my own pirate flag, uh, which goes a long way. You, Your channel is your brand. It is you. Make it that. Live it. Be proud of your brand. Don't wear other people's logos. Wear your logo. That'll be enough. Hey, thanks for watching. As always, please subscribe. Hit the bell notification if you want to know of new content. And may the winds always be at your back.